our hearts for the celebration of this Mass by reminding ourselves of the new life we received through the waters of baptism and Christ's triumph over death and sin. God, our Father, thy gift of water brings life and freshness to the earth. In baptism, it is a sign of the washing away of our sins and the gift of life eternal. Sanctify this water, we pray. Renew the living spring of thy life within us, that we may be free from sin and filled with thy saving help. Through Christ our Lord. forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve the impureness of living and true. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great peace was among them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard 
so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, 
peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in the his book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. and confidence shall be our strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Although this second Sunday of Easter might sit somewhat in the shadow of the first, it has no shortage of names. Thomas Sunday, reflecting the Gospel, or Quasimodo Sunday reflecting the entrance antiphon. In the Eastern Church, Renewal Sunday or Anti-Pascha. In the West, White Sunday, Bright Sunday, and in the official modern Roman calendar, Divine Mercy Sunday, with Sister Faustina's attendant, Star Wars Jesus. <laughs> to many of us, this is Low Sunday, not meant pejoratively, of course, either a corruption of laudes, the opening word of the Paschal sequence in the Serum Rite, or simply on this octave day of Easter as a concluding contrast to the high festivities of last week. But high and low 
make some emotional sense to us, I think, today. We probably feel the difference. There's something so heady about Holy Week and Easter. Those eight sacred days so heavy with emotion in the inherent drama of the events we commemorate and in what, all that, what, what is stirred up in our own hearts. We can't keep Holy Week properly without touching on our own experiences of loss, of guilt, of resentment, nor, I hope, without it inspiring our greatest hopes and aspirations. All life, all meaning set within a dramatic, pregnant microcosm. We're carried along by the excitement of it all, by that public witness on Palm Sunday, as the world turns a rare and fleeting glance to our, towards our faith. Moved by the spare desolation of Good Friday, encouraged on Easter Sunday by a church swollen in number by fellow travellers gathered to hear Mozart and Mascagni and belt out Thine be the glory. But here we are again, still in the octave of Easter, but on the cusp, in a sense, of the ordinary lives to which we're sent out. The ordinary, largely undramatic lives which Christ's dramatic paschal triumph equips and commands us to honour and live quietly and confidently to the full. The eighth day after a boy's birth was in ancient Jewish custom the day of circumcision, that sign of the covenant. On this eighth day of the resurrection and of our rebirth in Christ, we once more commit ourselves to the ordinary work that those extraordinary events we commemorated last week at once demand of us and enable us to undertake. Many of us will find this transition difficult. The crash after the adrenaline rush, the post-Paschal blues. Pam Shipman gets it in a line that I fear most of you will be either too young or too old or perhaps too highbrow to recognize. It's all the drama, Mick. I just love it. It's easier somehow when things are interesting. I have a suspicion that not a few priestly vocations are the result in part at least of God resorting to, to, to dramatic means to save certain otherwise errant souls. The drama is compelling and we can find it all easier to be good Christians, find ourselves more secure in our faith, more committed in our observances amidst the heightened, fulsome spectacle of the great feasts. The difficult work can come between those great set pieces, persevering through dryness, through ordinariness, being loyal to the familiar repetitions of our lives of prayer, maintaining a sense of purpose, a sense of conviction, a sense of the day-to-day -day relevance of our faith every day, and of the quiet but ceaseless presence of Christ with us, <clears throat> right now and even until the end of the ages. This morning's Gospel shows us how God knows our predicament, the subject of all sorts of social and psychological analysis of varied worth, what Thomas certainly does display is that desire, that need present in different degrees in all of us for certainty, for the dramatic, for a constant feast. And Thomas's need is, of course, met in one of the strangest and most compelling scenes in sacred scripture, almost unbearably intimate. In the King James translation, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, and reach hither my, thy hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Let us not forget that despite his doubting soubriquet, the apostle goes on to a legendary and dramatic witness to the risen Lord in the East, even unto death. Likewise, we are graciously offered aid in our lives of faith in the drama of Holy Week and the great feasts, in the sensory assault that is our liturgy, 
in the theatre of this building, thrust up to articulate God and to house his very presence. And perhaps most remarkably, the invitation issued today and every day to eat of his very flesh and blood. Feast on him and give thanks for these tangible, dramatic gifts of grace. But be prepared alongside that, indeed through that, to persevere. Charge your batteries, in a sense, for the times in between, where most of our lives are, of course, led. To push, push on in our prayers, even when they dry out. To persist in attendance here and in engagement with the church and her sacraments, even beyond the drama of the year's high points. Ever to have, even amidst our lowest points, a sense of the heights promised to us at Easter. To trust that our lives, however ordinary they may seem, or whatever difficulties that they are beset by, however we might feel them to be lacking, are the very material God has honoured and with which he has entrusted us, to which he has commissioned us. To know the worth of the small gifts and gestures and efforts and prayers we make, even when we feel that they go unrecognised and unrewarded. Feast now in thankfulness on what the Lord has given to us, so that in those times when we do not feel or experience or see him at work, we may yet persist, we may yet grow, we may yet believe. From the American Prayer Book. O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of thy spirit lift us, we pray thee, to thy presence, where we may be still and know that thou art God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
rejoicing in our Lord's Paschal triumph and believing and trusting in his divine mercy, let us bring our prayers and petitions before Almighty God. We pray for God's Church, for her unity and peace, for this parish that we may grow together in faith and be a visible sign to the world of Christ's redeeming love. For the friends of All Saints Margaret Street, praying today especially for Matthew Whitaker, Tim Widowfield, David Wilcox, T. Bradford Willis, Ian Wilson, and Juliet Wyndham. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for our country, for Charles, our King, and all those in positions of temporal authority under him, that we may be governed with integrity and compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the nations and for their leaders, we pray for those places in the world where there is tyranny and unrest, and for those regions torn by warfare. We pray especially for reconciliation and for an end to conflict in the Holy Land and in Ukraine. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, gracious, hear us. That those who suffer in body, mind, or estate may know the healing comfort of the risen Lord. We pray for those we bring here on our hearts and for those who have asked for our public prayers, remembering especially Javier Barbetta, Martin Berker, David Craig, Roger Dilks, Father Harry Hodgetts, Leslie Lee, Wendy Leach, Elizabeth Lyon, Frank Otwell, James Roger, and Bruce Ross Smith. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear us. Joyful in the Lord's resurrection and confident through his victory of our own call to eternal life, let us pray for the souls of the faithful departed, for those we love but whom we see on this earth no longer, for the souls who have confessed the faith but are known only to God, for the recently departed, and for those who died on this day in years past, especially Stanley Ely, Peggy Monk, and Margaret Leach. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord. Amen. Lord, hear us. Let us unite our prayers with those of heaven and ask for a share of the intercession of the saints and especially those of heaven's queen, Our Lady of Walsingham, whom we greet together in familiar words. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace the, the Lord is, is with thee. Blessed are thou, and blessed is Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of my Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Then came Jesus and stood in the midst of his disciples and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Then they were dis- then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Amen. And with thy spirit. Alleluia.
my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of thy hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our hope and for the full history of the church. Accept, O Lord, we pray thee, the gifts which in her gladness the church doth offer unto thee, that they on whom thou hast bestowed the cause of so great a gladness may thereby be profited unto everlasting felicity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is his right It is truly meet and right, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim thee, O Lord, but in this time above all to Lord thee yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, exults in thy praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of thy glory as they acclaim. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and his blood. 
who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. For, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ thy Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of thy divine majesty, together with Jonathan, our Bishop, and Sarah, the Bishop of London, renew us by thy Holy Spirit, inspire us with thy love, and unite us in the body of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say,
us pray. Lord God, our Father, who through our Saviour Jesus Christ has assured us of eternal life and in baptism has made us one with him, deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in thy love, in the fellowship of thy Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Praise be to God, alleluia,
Thank you. 